Davis here with uh, Barrett Financial Group and uh, David Kelly Davis with EXP Realty. Um, I lately we've been getting a lot of our clients and just friends, family, um, other people asking about how we are financing short-term rental properties and the available options for short-term rental financing. So I wanted to put together a quick video and kind of go over all the different short-term rental financing options that are available um, on the market today and kind of give you an overview of what we have available. So those of you that aren't familiar with me, I am with Barrett Financial Group. We are mortgage brokers. Uh, I have relations with over 30 different lenders that offer all different types of financing. So I have the option to find you the best loan for the product that you're looking for. So I wanna get into basically what we use as investment property. So there are three main investment loans that we would consider using. The first one's gonna be the second home loan. Uh, then we have investment loans and then the DSCR loans. So let me go into detail about each of these loans and see if these are good fits for you and explain the pros and cons of each of them. So the first one that I want to talk about is going to be the 10% down second home loans. This is one of my favorite loans to use for new investors. Uh, the, the benefit of this one is that it's a 10% down loan. So instead of a lot of people thinking they have to have 20% down to buy investment properties, you can get away with doing 10% down as a second home loan. Now, there are some factors to take into account with it being a second home loan rather than a strict investment loan. So some of the uh, key things about this, these are Freddie Fannie backed conventional or jumbo type loans. Like I said, they only require 10% down. These are debt to income ratio loans. So you do need to stay under a 50% debt to income ratio for a conforming loan, which is 647,000 or 200 or less in most areas of the country. If we go with a jumbo loan, it's gotta stay under 45% on um, that um, loan amount. If we're over 647, 200, that's considered a jumbo loan. So these debt to income ratios do matter for second home investment loans. This is going to be all of your total debts, right? So what you got to do is take your monthly income, your gross monthly income, times it by 50% and then subtract off your current mortgage payments, credit card payments, student loan payments, car payments. That will leave you what's, with what's available for your future payment for these second home loans. Um, because this is a second home loan, you are using this truly as a second home or a vacation home. So most lenders are going to want to see you using it at least 14 days a year for personal use. So if your intention is to buy a property and never use it as a home for yourself, you're strictly going to rent it out. This is not the loan for you. This is for a loan, kind of like what uh, Kelly and I did. We bought our house down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and we love to go there. We went there for New Year's. We went there for spring break. It's a getaway for us to use, but the times that we're not using it, we're renting it out on Airbnb and Verbo, and we're creating income off that property. One of the things with these loans, because they are Freddie Fannie conventional type loans, you have to close in your personal name. You cannot close in an LLC with these loans. However, a lot of investors will let you just go ahead and quick claim to an LLC as long as you are the majority shareholder of the LLC, right? If you are not a majority shareholder of the LLC, that investor could call the loan due on the due on sale clause and you would have to basically pay off that loan uh, because you transferred it to an LLC where you're not the majority holder. But as long as you're the majority holder of that loan, right, and you're making your payments on that loan, um, you would be able to go ahead and transfer it to an LLC. Again, check with the investor, make sure they're gonna allow that. Um, but that's really the uh, benefits of these 10% down second home loans is it's gonna be less cash out of pocket. So your cash on cash return is gonna be much greater. Um, and that's really the benefit of it. Um, rates are going to be probably a little bit better than what you're going to find with like DSCR type loans. Um, but second home loans definitely are increased in their rates as well. Now, if we don't have enough debt to income to qualify for the type of property that you want to buy, the next loan that I recommend our clients look at are the 15% down investment loans. And these loans are really cool because again, they are Freddie Fannie backed loans, but you can use 75% of the projected rental income to offset your debt to income ratio. So quick example, if the property is bringing $1,000 a month of projected rental income, you can use $750 a month of that as income to offset that. So really only $250 a month is gonna count against you as new debt, right? So if we run those debt to income ratios and at 50% level, you're kind of pushing, maybe you've only got $500 left before you go over. We could look at doing these type of loans, use that projected rental income, and you can still qualify to buy a 15% down investment property. 
Um, these loans will have mortgage insurance on them because you're not putting the full 20% down, but it does give that greater option if you're tight with that to income ratios. Now, the next thing would be the 20% down investment loans, which these ones are great um, because they will not have MI on the loan. We can still use 75% of that projected rental income to offset the debt to income and the rates are gonna be better than the 15% down investment loans. So again, if you're looking for cash on cash return, the 15% down is gonna give you better cash on cash than the 20%, but the 20% will have a lower monthly payment for you. So your return overall will be greater. Now, if we are totally out of our debt to income ratio, we're over the 50% or anything that we do with investments is not gonna put us there, or maybe you just don't have stable income, you're self-employed, you're not claiming a lot on tax returns, or maybe you only have one year of tax returns instead of two, then we can look at the DSCR loans. These are debt servicing coverage ratio loans. These loans are great. They don't require any income by you. All they do is use the projected rental income of a property. So they're not personal debt to income, they're only based off the projected rental income of the property. How that's gonna be pulled is some investors are gonna do what's called a 1007. So when the appraiser comes out to appraise the property, he's also gonna do a projection, a rental revenue uh, for the property, which is gonna say, hey, this property will rent out for $2,000 a month for fair market value. That's good to use a lot of times in some short-term markets. If you get into, you know, like the um, Gulf Coast, maybe down in Crystal Beach, Texas, Myrtle Beach area, you're going to see that the long-term rental projections might not cover what the mortgage payment's going to be because property values are pretty high right now. So in that case, we want to find an investor that's going to allow us to use short-term rental incomes as well because the short-term rental incomes obviously are going to produce more income than the long-term rental will. So we have investors that will do both. The rates can be different for those. The benefit of these is you can close these in an LLC. Uh, some of these, you don't even need to source your down payment funds. So if you're getting funds from a partner that's investing with you, you don't need to source those funds as long as you have the funds for the 20% down payment on a DSCR product, you can do it. Uh, we do have 15% down options for DSCRs. Those interest rates are pretty high right now, but they are a great option to, again, conserve on cash. The rates are based on credit scores for this. So the better your credit score is, the better the rate's gonna be. But again, it's just based off the credit score. It has nothing to do with your income levels. Um, and again, these loans close in LLCs. These do not show up as personal debt because it is a business buying the property. It's not gonna show up as your personal debt. So if you're looking to, again, purchase a primary property, you don't have to worry about your investment property showing up as debt to income ratio for you because it's gonna be showing up on the business tax returns, not your personal, and it's closed in the LLC's name. So those are the three type of loans that we really use. The 10% down second home loans, if we can't do that, we get into a 15 or 20% down investment loan. If we don't have debt to income ratio for that, then we look at the DSCR loans. I'd be happy to talk to you in more detail about these loans. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at any point. Uh, my email is Dave Davis at barrettfinancial.com and my direct cell phone 815-546-7621. Look forward to helping you out and reach out with any questions.